Hey everybody, tonight we're going to be debating Ozian versus Nathan. Was the moon landing a hoax? And Nathan Thompson is going to start us out, so the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I want to thank James for hosting me here on Modern Day Debate. I want to thank the uh, debater I'm debating, Ozian, uh, especially for his debate last night. I think he made more flat earthers than the flat earthers made flat earthers. He said you could see the earth curve from 200 feet from a drone and that you could prove the Earth orbits the sun by the size of the sun in the sky throughout the year. Now, uh, we're talking about the moon landing, so I'll skip straight to that. Uh, allegedly, about 50 years ago, a couple guys jumped in a tweakless, uh, tweaker homeless shelter, traveled 230,000 miles in three days, approximately 75,000 miles a day, and then they slowed down in the vacuum of nothing, landed, played golf, talked to the president on a landline telephone, came back, then we lost all the telemetry data, then we destroyed the technology to go back, Don Pettit said it's a painful process to build it back, and um, haven't been back in 50 years. So here we are, uh, I got a little bit of a presentation. If I could, I'm gonna go ahead and share this keynote. Do I have to hit share screen on the Zoom? Okay, great. Stop video view, there it is. Desktop share. There we go, and we can all see that now. Great, I got a couple things I wanna get into here, so let's get right into it. Where are all the stars in the NASA photos? Ladies and gentlemen, they are faking space entirely. All of it is fake, none of it is real. You can't travel to a vacuum that doesn't exist, just like you can't travel to Narnia through a closet. Big complex lies are hard to keep straight when they are compartmentalized, like NASA's lies. For example, whilst, whilst from in Mark space, Cameron, this is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see. Notice how Don Pettit didn't even really know what to say right there. He he hadn't studied the narrative. I guess. Look how they look at each other. Do do we do we see stars in space? Look at this. This is so obvious, guys. It's also, if you read the body language, after they landed back on the moon, those guys were like rock stars, and they just stared at the ground the entire interview and could barely answer questions. And in that interview, Neil Tyson says, you couldn't see stars from space. So they've got massive problems, guys. These astronauts can't even get their lines straight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. you can see the stars. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time, you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. Oops, wait a minute. Remember these guys? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. Never able to. The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. And we could not see stars. It's it's not the, the a black cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars, just like here on Earth. There's all the there's all the stars. All right, so these guys can't get their story straight. Let's skip to the next slide because I got a lot to cover here. Although it appears that the astronauts were moving in the moon's gravity, which is one sixth that of the Earth, Percy notes that when the speed of the film is doubled, the astronauts appear to be running as if in Earth's gravity. Not just that, but you could see through the guys. Did I just go to the next slide? Sorry, guys, I haven't done this in a while. You could see through the gentleman's face. Here. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. One second. It was see through. There's more going on than. Look at you can see through the spacesuit. You can see the lunar rover in the background. All right, here we it go. Was shot on Earth. If there's no air or wind on the moon, look at that transparent astronaut. That you can see the lunar Earth module through the astronaut. I mean, and we're debating this fifty years later. Are, are you serious? Why is this American flag waving? 
The fact that the flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere. Oops. Well, NASA changed their story in 2019 and said the atmosphere extends past the moon. But they didn't know that when they landed on the moon. They figured it out a few years ago. It means that there <laughs> must have been a little blast of wind out in Area 51 where they shot this. Could these questionable images simply be the result of the astronauts struggling to plant the flag in the lunar surface? Or is there more going on than meets the eye? What about the still photography? Some say the design of the bulky space would have made it extremely difficult for the astronauts to operate their chest-mounted cameras. The we'll get to these spacesuits in a second. And who designed these cameras is Jorn Lundberg. Once on the moon, on the lunar surface, in the dress, in the life of the... This is the guy who designed the equipment, guys. This is not some flat-earth YouTuber, ladies and gentlemen. These are boomers that have figured it out. Boomers, bro. We got to get with the times here. Come on. System, you couldn't see the camera. They couldn't bend their head that far down. They had no viewfinder. They had to aim by moving their body. Where? Cameras were so difficult to manipulate. How were thousands of photos taken with crystal clarity and precise framing? It's almost like they were done on a movie set, ladies and gentlemen. Then you've got all these problems with the shadows. There, I mean, there's so much in here. I don't even have time to cover it. There's, look at all these d shadows, multiple angles of shadows. Okay, that's a problem. All right, let's talk about the spacesuits. The percent of the human body is 70% water. What would happen to these astronauts? So what would happen to them in a vacuum? Well, this is water. And when you place water in a vacuum, you'll see what happens here. A little bit of bubbles start going and wool start boiling. How cool is that? Yeah, super cool. Unless you're in a spacesuit and they're testing your spacesuit in a vacuum. Let's see what happens there. But the ultimate and most dangerous test was a huge specially constructed vacuum chamber. Now keep in mind, no vacuum chamber on Earth is even close to as strong as the alleged vacuum of space, which is 10 to the negative 17 tor. The strongest one they can make here on Earth is 10 to the negative 6 tor, and they have two feet of steel walls backed by four feet of concrete. Six foot walls. So when we say gas pressure requires a container, we're not joking. All of space is fake. The sky is a firmament. Sun, moon, stars locked in it. It's a map and it's a clock for us. It was put there for us. They want to hide all this. We were able to pull all the air out, create a big vacuum. That way we could test our suits to make sure there was no leakage. One such test narrowly avoided disaster. Jim LeBlanc was the test subject in the vacuum chamber. This is one of the rare instances where they try to use a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber, but quickly realized that it's impossible in a high vacuum. So they immediately started using swimming pools to train and remain silent on the absence of vacuum chamber trip. Yep, I asked a natural buoyancy lab employee in Houston, Texas. I said, you know, we know that all the ISS footage is fake. We know you're faking it. The lady literally had wet hair like she just came out of a pool. And she go, looks me dead in the eye and she goes, oh, do you know we're faking it because the bubbles? Is that how you know it's fake? Because of the bubbles? The, these people, no, they're lying in your face. Absolute snakes, wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing. Don't believe a thing that they say. NASA means to deceive in Hebrew. It's the word Satan beguiled Eve with. Satan nasad Eve in Hebrew. Look it up. By astronauts, which basically is a lie by omission. As I stumble backwards, I can no feel the slime on my tongue starting to bubble. bubble. And he passes out. Just yeah. before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Essentially, he had no pressure on the outside of his body, and that's a very unusual case to get. And there's very little in the medical literature as to what happens when you have that. It's a lot of conjecture, you know, that your fluids will boil, you know, that your fluids will boil. You can see a little bit of bubble start going. I could feel the slime on my tongue start. Great. 
That's good. I got tons of bloopers here, but I don't have enough time to go over all of them. So we'll just scroll through. We've got CGI glitches, Obama talking about the Flatter Society. There's the bubbles in space, ladies and gentlemen. Go look this stuff up. There's hours and hours of NASA bloopers. Look at this guy ghosting out of frame. He turns into a ghost, and you can see through him too. Interesting, just like the moonwalk. All right, look at these wires. You can see wires, CGI glitches, divers, reflections. You can see the scuba diver there. I mean, there's tons of this stuff. And just to finish it off here, ladies and gentlemen, we've got our favorite NASA employee, Don Pettit. Read between the lines. Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They did it back in the 60s and 70s, but in 2023, we don't have the technology anymore, and it's a very painful process to fake the moon landing. That's all I have. I'll turn it over. All right. If you want to stop the screen share there and uh, want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, and just uh, if you notice off to my side here, uh, Modern Day Debate is a neutral platform. We are hosting debates on science and religion, politics, and etc. cetera. Uh, you can pretty much find it here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just to remind everybody that within 24 hours, all of these debates will be turned into podcast forum. Uh, so uh, if you like what you're hearing from either of our speakers, uh, you can hear them on the go. Uh, we're going to kick it over to Ozzy and, uh, for his up to 10 minute opening. You're on mute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just want to point out that opening statement started with poison in the well attacking my previous comments out of context. Anyway, so hey there, Earthlings. Today, we're talking about those pesky mood landing conspiracy theories that won't disappear. Some folks insist that the US government faked the Apollo moon landings in the 60s and 70s, like they were some Hollywood movie. But let's look at the facts and bust those wild claims once and for all. Shout out to Modern Day Debate and Nathan for joining us on this mission to uncover the truth about the moon landing. To justify belief of a historical event, all I need to do is show that the event is physically possible and that there are primary sources and secondary sources that all confirm that the event happened and I'm going to do that today. Some skeptics believe the moon landing was a big hoax. These space doubters thought the whole thing was a Hollywood show. They spent hours analyzing old footage, arguing about how the flag was moving, the shadows looked weird, and claiming the whole thing was a bit a lie but they didn't count on the President Kennedy determination to put a man on the moon by the end of the 60s, and he did it. Even that meant faking the entire Apollo program, building a massive rocket, and launching it into space to trick conspiracy buffs. But on J July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history by landing on the moon. Now think about how amazing it is that humans went to the moon. In the 60s, NASA built that massive Saturn V rocket to conduct the Apollo missions including the famous Apollo 11. This giant rocket was 110 meters tall and 10 meters wide with five powerful F1 engines in its first stage, creating 33.4 million newtons of thrust. First stage lasted for two minutes, 42 seconds before it's dumped into the ocean. The second stage continues until nine minutes, 12 seconds, traveling to a height of 175 kilometers. And they get rid of the emergency rocket during that portion of the trip if something failed. Third stage took them to a parking orbit of 190 kilometers, 11 minutes, 39 seconds. Don't forget, we consider space to have started the Kármán line at 100 kilometers, so they're already in space. 190 kilometers in the parking orbit is where they orbit the Earth two or three times to make sure everything is good to go and to get in a good position transition through the Van Allen belts. But they, then they engage the third stage for about six minutes to get them into the translunar injection towards the moon. Then the CSN, the command support module detaches, does a 180 and docks with the LEN, which is a landing module. Then they went into a slow roll for a passive thermal control, which they don't even bring that up. Like they had a roll to not overheat, spread the heat out. Lunar orbit insertion, the CSM fired for about five minutes to slow down and get in orbit with spotty communication with Houston. Now it's time to get into the LEM and land onto the moon. Poor Michael Collins gets left behind in the CSM. So damn close. 
Getting to the moon needed more than just a rocket and CSM. We also required the lunar module to land on the moon's surface. The lunar module used during Apollo 11 went through a ton of testing before the mission, including an uncrewed trial flight in January 68 and a crewed test flight in March 69. All this was done to make sure everything worked perfectly. Now it's time for the descent orbit insertion. The descent module fired up for about 30 seconds, gets them down to about 50,000 feet above the moon. The next stage was power descent initiation. They have to maneuver the front of the lamb to see a safe place to land. They have to visually see where they're landing. It's amazing. Because they have telescopes. They have the surface mapped out like they do today. It's the first time humans been up that and close in Percival. They were true pioneers with limited fuel, and they even had some sensors hanging down to tell them when they could shut off little dangly things, shut off the descent module when they made contact. That descent module then became the launch platform used to get the ascent module back up in orbit and to dock with the CSM where it was then detached to crash land onto the moon's surface. It's crazy to believe this was a cover-up. If this were a conspiracy, they would. why would they have designed the suit for the command service module pilot not to be equipped for the lunar lander? It was a different suit, well, same suit with different attachments. It's like they planned for a real mission to the moon, so weird. Speaking of suits, Space suits, those fashionable marvels in engineering and science allow our intrepid astronauts to boldly go where no person has gone before, all while remaining comfortably pressurized and protected from the harsh vacuum of space. NASA, which means uplifting in Hebrew, if we want to forget it's an acronym that means the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, it's not some secret code, and its partners devoted years of research and development to create the magnificent A7L spacesuit. This baby was tailor-made to withstand the moon's brutal terrain and empower astronauts to perform experiments like cosmic superheroes. Now, some naysayers out there claim that spacesuits are nothing more than elaborate hoax, a frivolous accessory, if you will. But let's be clear, these conspiracy theorists are as misinformed as someone who believes that wearing socks with sandals is a fashion statement. Hey, wait. <laughs> the truth is, the spacesuit is an absolute necessity when exploring the Great Void. And its one-fourth standard atmosphere rating is a testament to that. Now, you might be wondering how you could survive the, with one-fourth standard atmosphere within the suit. Well, that's because it was a 60-40 mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. And one-fourth standard atmosphere is equivalent to an altitude about 10 kilometers above sea level, a little bit higher than Mount Everest. You might be wondering, why don't these spacesuits inflate like Aunt Mabel's latex gloves at a family barbecue? Well, my friends, the answer lies in the high-tech materials and ingenious design. Unlike those unfortunate gloves, the spacesuit's construction is rock solid, ensuring no accidental ballooning occurs. You see, maintain a pressure difference between the lunar vacuum and the suit's interior at one four standard atmosphere is like swimming down to a depth of three meters. And considering we already have suits that can handle the crushing depths of hundreds of meters underwater, Whipping up a spacesuit to handle the equivalent of leisurely three meter dip is a piece of cosmic skate, even though it like took a couple of years. Anyways, to protect astronauts from radiation, the Apollo missions followed a carefully planned path and used shielding on the spacecraft to guard against the Van Allen radiation belts. Aluminum blocked the charged proton ionized radiation, and the insulation used within it blocked the charged electron ionized radiation, at least most of it. They actually experienced approximately 0 0.8 rad the entire mission on average for all of the missions involved going to the moon. These belts are made up of charged particles of protons and electrons that are collected by the Earth's magnetic field blown in by solar winds and are not waves. As a matter of fact, if the hole had been made of lead, the interaction between the charged particles and lead would have produced X-rays, which would have been dangerous to the astronauts. So let's raise a glass to the brilliant minds who crafted these pressurized wonders. Any claims that spacesuits are unnecessary that they don't handle the they can't handle the pressure demonstrates a clear lack of understanding, much like someone who thinks that the moon is made of green cheese. Spacesuits are essential in our quest to explore the universe, and without them, our intrepid space adventurers would be gasping for air and longing for the sweet embrace of Earth's atmosphere. So here's to you, A7L spacesuit, for making sure our cosmic explorers can keep boldly going where no one has gone before, except the Chinese and Israelis and Japanese and Chinese now. <laughs>
Close the scientific evidence and expert analysis have thoroughly debunked the idea that the moon landing was a hoax. The Apollo lunar mission was an incredible achievement in human history, thanks to the scientists, engineers, and astronauts' hard work and perseverance. The Saturn V rocket, the E7L spacesuit, and the lunar module resulted from years of research, experimentation, and innovation. The historical evidence supporting the moon landings is vast and includes photos, videos, audio recordings, and scientific data. The events is supported by detailed records of the Apollo missions, which include photos, videos, and scientific data collected during the missions. The first-hand accounts of astronauts who were there and the scientists and engineers who worked on the mission also back up this evidence. This evidence would stand up in court because it's based on physical laws and historical records that can be independently verified. And let's be honest, if there were a conspiracy to fake the moon landing, the American government would have messed it up anyway. They couldn't even keep a hotel break-in secret. The fact that there's so much historical evidence, photos, videos, and scientific data backing up the moon landing shows that it wasn't a hoax. In my opening, I said that I'm justified in believing that we landed on the moon if it was physically possible and if the historical record is incontrovertible. I have demonstrated the first, and we have all have seen the beautiful photos and heard the testimonials from the astronauts. So my belief is justified, and the burden to disprove this belief is nearly insurmountable. Five nations have been to the moon, and three landed on it without crashing. I would be crazy to deny the moon landing happened, but I'm open to hearing what Nathan has to say. We already heard it. Open to the discussion. The idea that a vast secret involving many people could be hidden for so long is just plain bonkers. That's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your opening, uh, Ozzy, and uh, to both of our speakers. Uh, I will just uh, remind everybody, uh, we are doing Q&A at the end of our discussion here. Uh, just to remind you to keep the questions related to our subject and not attacks against our speakers. Uh, and once again, uh, yes, you can find us on our podcast forums within 24 hours of these discussions. So we're going to kick it into an open discussion for up to 50 minutes, uh, and we'll kick it over to Nathan to uh, open us up. You're on mute. Yeah, no offense to Ozian. I'm not sure if that was an opening or a clear eyes commercial. So, uh, as long okay. as it sells a product, I guess that's good. Well, you did regurgitate and repeat everything like a good parrot should. So, I got to give you credit on that, Ozian. Thank uh, you. Now, now uh, you claim that the spacesuits work, but when they tested them in a vacuum, they didn't work. Yeah, years before they used them in space, they failed and they they repaired them. They did improvements. I think that was the A57 that failed or A5L, I think it is. And by the time they went to space, they were using the A7L that worked, yes. Okay, well, if they're in space, uh, which is a negative pressurized environment, why would oh, they? Oh, no. Zero pressure. No, zero. zero pressure. It's not oh, negative. Zero pressure. Well, why yeah, did it plane in a pool, which increases the pressure even more than earth's atmosphere they're designed to resist um a pressure from the inside of the suit outwards not from the outside of the suit inwards and i'm not aware of the what you're talking about i think you're talking about artifacts you see like bubbles floating up from the suit while they're in the water is that what you're talking about no they train at the natural buoyancy laboratory they have a fully mm -hmm. fun the complete replica of the iss underwater now they've been caught with green screens in the background and stuff and obviously there's hours and hours of bloopers nasa faking it you can see divers in the mask of the astronauts you can see them ghosting out of screen you can see wires cgi glitches augmented reality glitches your claim there's all of them all been debunked for countless times and you know it has what do you mean you keep repeating the same thing Bloopers have been debunked. I mean, if they were really in space, you wouldn't there, have to debunk there, bloopers. So there are camera artifacts. There's other explanations. There's like stuff okay. moving around. They could be camera artifacts. All that okay. stuff's been refuted. You know it has. I'm not going to go through a detailed oh. refutation of every single photo and every single video. If you want to, it'd be here a few hours. But What about, well, well since we're here, you know, Ozian, uh, how about we talk about the bubbles in space? So our bubbles. Yeah, show the so bubbles. Bubbles show. are like air with water around them. They're not bubbles. They don't fall up. They go in different directions. Did you, did you just they're say not they're, all going did, up. Did you just say they're air with water around them? That's a what a bubble a is bubble air thing. with water around it. When it's in water, you're talking, you're saying they are underwater 
and those bubbles are this air leaving their wherever it's leaving from and creating bubbles that float up to the surface. What else are you talking about? Here, I'll share my screen. So you're seeing it's not pockets of air floating in a swimming pool. What the heck is going on here? Good. I'm glad we agree. Am I still looking at the debate here? It won't. There we go. The bubbles. Okay. They uh, invert the colors to make them more obvious here. Of course There's do. one. It doesn't go straight up. That's not a bubble. What are you talking about? Right, That's because in a pool with people swimming around, there would be all sorts of turbulence and currents moving around. So okay. this actually doesn't behave how something would flake off the ISS, which is the official story. Oh, something oh. the ISS has just been falling apart for 20 years. A bubble goes straight up, dude. Like you've you ever been in a pool and like blown bubbles? Like they go straight up. You didn't they listen don't, to what they I all said. go. I I did listen to what you say they don't do this jagged movement. Like that artifact is doing, I don't know what it is. Other people have explained what it is. I wasn't okay. prepared to address this photo, this video. Yeah, I got it. You weren't prepared to address it, but yeah, I, I agree. A bubbles in just a, a pool with nobody in it, nobody swimming around would go straight up, but these yes. are pools where they are faking ISS spacewalks. And so people are swimming around. There's lots of divers. They're holding giant cameras. The astronauts are fake playing with nuts and bolts on the outside of the- So you're seeing the water's Sorry turbulence? To, uh, Sorry to interject. Uh, can we stop the screen share or uh, finish the example there? Yeah, we'll just play it out for the audience one more time. See, you'll notice the bubble. bubble. They're, they're speeding up, slowing down and changing directions. Now the official story is like, oh, that's just you know something in space debris or or fl something's flaking off the ISS. Well, if you're moving 17,000 miles an hour around the Earth, they would anything coming off would only move in one direction. It's moving with the this, this space station. It doesn't lose all the momentum the space station has for the falling, actually. All right, so you, didn't, uh, you weren't prepared for the bubbles in space argument. Maybe I already addressed the bubble in space. It's not, a, it's not a bubble. It's an artifact floating around. A bubble would go straight up. Now you're trying to say there's a bunch of turbulence in the water. Some rapid turbulence in the water like that would be moving the astronaut around too. It's not turbulence in water. Uh, it's an okay. artifact. Ast is Astronauts are going to be a lot more difficult to move around than a bubble. For example, if you're sitting in front of me in the water and I go like this to the water, any bubbles in front of me would move around, but you would stay completely stationary, Ozian. You're joking. As somebody me. with kids has been in a pool quite often with my kids, Bubbles go up, dude. They might go a little bit, but they basically go whoop, really, really super That's quick. That's pretty much what that bubble was doing was, was going it? up. It was just moving side to side. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even traveling fast enough. How but. would something in space do that? It's an artifact in space. I don't know precisely what it was. It's Somebody else could probably answer it. So, so there's just artifacts in space. Somebody in the super chat, leave a super chat, explain exactly what they discovered it was, and we can move so, on. So there's just artifacts in space floating around the ISS. Um, sure. I don't know. Whatever sure. that was. Yeah, if that's what they told you, you'd believe it. The, uh, the astronauts are artifacts, if you want to call them artifacts, are floating around in space around the ISS. So there's right, stuff. Well, let's that... talk about space. Can you have gas uh -huh. pressure without a container? Yes. Have you, can you demonstrate that? Yes. Without begging the question about what the Earth is and the Earth. Being oh, there. so now you're. I thought this was a moon landing debate, not this a, is, but the a moon flat is Earth debate. In space, buddy. So I know. It's going to travel through space. So, so you're going to, to die space? To okay, prove that space doesn't exist. I'm waiting. I have, right. I have historical evidence that proves that space exists. So what do you got, right. buddy? Prove space doesn't exist. All right. I'm going to have to go with a reliable source that you're going to enjoy because... Uh, Are you going to talk about Einstein this with the either? Okay. I don't mind no, sidestepping on the uh, is space real for like uh, maybe four or five minutes, but then let's get back to the uh, the moon landing there. Yeah, no problem. Here's your NASA website, buddy, admitting not only that water needs a container, but that all of gas, gas pressure requires mm -hmm. a container as well. For example, gravity. I know. Gravity is not a physical container. And then you have the problem. Gravity's of physical. What are you talking about? Gravity's physical. Hey, Ben Stein, can you please stop interrupting me? 
Okay, please. Thank I'll you. let you talk. I've been super cordial this debate, right? Yeah, continue on. Gravity is allegedly the strongest at Earth's surface. Now, you're familiar with the fact that gas moves in all directions. It's omnidirectional at Earth's surface, where your gravity container is the strongest. It so if gas is moving in all directions down here on the surface, you would have mm -hmm. to explain why it's not moving in all directions where the weaker gravity is closer to space. There's less molecules closer to space to move, and they do move in all directions, but relatively they, they um, are contained by the earth and they move with the earth as it rotates around. And so the gas that, um, so it depends on the gas that release. Some gas sinks, right? Like if you release SF6, it finds a level down. It's like liquid, like water, it finds a level in any type of deep trenches or surfaces. Like they can actually suffocate if you get SF6 leak on a substation or something like that. So it depends on the type of gas, if it's lighter, if it's um, denser or less dense, the air that's surrounded. If it's less dense, like helium, like if you've seen a helium balloon, right? You let a helium balloon go, it goes straight up. It doesn't disperse like this because it's much less dense than the surrounding air, so it goes straight up. So you're talking about the difference oh. in density between the gases it release. Other Some gases will go up super quick, but they will disperse and go up. Other gases will scatter around within the atmosphere around you. Okay, I'll touch on this one more time and then we can move on. NASA explains the phases of matter. Now, where it says gas, it doesn't say some kind of gas. Junior, do this. junior high like, phases of matter. Okay, but like that's you just are. what we. Me, bro. Come on, you're going to have to wait for your clear eyes commercial until I'm done. Okay? And continue so, on. Shape of container. Gas takes the shape and the volume of its container. Now, I'll ask real simply and then we can move on. Can you demonstrate gas pressure on Earth without a container, without presupposing your fairy tale vacuum of space? Gas pressure, yes. Well, we, we, we can measure gas pressure. We don't see a container. We don't see a container. Yeah. Okay. It's, so, we we, we so measure a container. Humor. We measure so gravity. So it's not there. We measure gravity. We don't visually see it. We see the so effects gravity of it. Is the container. Can you demonstrate gravity yep. containing gas pressure without a vacuum here on Earth? Uh, yeah, gas pressure, uh, gravity maintaining gas pressure without a vacuum here on Earth. Yes, we go to space. We go to space. Me and you, we're going to hold hands and go there? Tumba so it's it's a, a, on the way, dude? It's a rail, you. We can't go to space. The government goes to space, Ozian. You're familiar a, with that, right? It's the royal you, the royal we. I meant we as in human beings want to be pedantic about it. Go ahead. See, that's the problem with this cult rhetoric. It's like we went to the moon and we did this. Yeah. The, the problem is you never went. Only 550 people have ever allegedly gone to the fairy tale of vacuum of space. That's like a movie theater on a full Friday night. I, yeah, I, I say that we. I say we um, got our independence from Great Britain too, but I don't mean it was actually me. I know you're speaking French. I got it. I get it now. Okay. okay. So you can't demonstrate gas pressure without a vacuum here on earth, other than presupposing the earth is a ball in space, which is the thing you're trying to prove, Ozian. No, I'm trying to prove that the moon landing wasn't a hoax. Yeah, but we can't travel. Space travel is not possible if space is fake. But that was my whole point. Moderator, I guess we gave it about four minutes. We can move on. Uh, Ozian, I'd like to explain why, um, one, why moonlight is cold, and two, why the moon didn't even look like a light when they landed on it. It looked like a dim gray surface in the desert. What does this have anything to do with your opening argument or with my opening argument? Are you going to ask questions about okay, well, that? Well, they're, li they're lying about the nature of the moon. They say it's a rock in space that you can walk around and land on. It's terra firma. You haven't proven that. I, I haven't proven that. Yeah, and you said everything What's in your was independently, ver you could verify it independently. You said that in yep. your open. Okay, well. Yep, five uh, countries have been to the moon, five. Countries. Do you okay. understand? I'm here telling you the country, our country is the one lying to us. And you're over here, well, like other countries have a lied to other people. And I'm like, so? What do you, do you think that's proof? Countries are, are are made up of people. Yeah, and people lie. People lie, yes. Yeah. 
Especially so, when they're getting sixty million dollars a day, upwards now of eighty million dollars a day, and they sent out more. a movie theater of people up into space. They've allegedly created Velcro and Tang, and Globers are like, "Take my money. Where where do we give them another sixty million tomorrow?" Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the nature of the moon. They're lying about the nature of the moon. They say it's a rock in space. When you view the Earth, the moon from Earth, it's bright. You know, when you walk around the in albedo the, of the earth, of the moon, Ben right. Stein, please stop interrupting me, bro. I give you time to talk. I'm just asking you to do the same courtesy for me. We can move into like a one minute back and forth type. Uh, we, don't, we don't need, we just need him to stop interrupting or for you to moderate. Well, Either one. I was going to say, on. this is open discussion. So uh, feel free to uh, push back, but uh, I'm just supposed to let him talk, I guess. It's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll oh. get, we'll let Nathan finish up his point and then we'll uh, kick it over to you, Ozzy. Yeah, so when you view the moon from Earth, it's bright. But when they landed on it, it's not bright. And actually, the inverse square law should make it thousands of times brighter when you're walking on it than when you view it from the Earth. Go ahead. Now it's your turn to talk. It's not going to be thousands of times brighter than the Earth. So the Earth, this, the moon is much closer to the Earth than the sun is. The amount of light that we see on the moon is about equivalent to what we see on Earth. The moon sometimes is a little bit further away, sometimes a little bit closer to the sun. They get a little bit more or less white light depending on where they are. Um, so that what we're seeing is the albedo, the reflection off the regolith on the moon, which is like, I think there's like seven to 10%. So that's the light we're seeing from the moon. It's not actual light originating from the moon. It's originating from the sun and reflecting off the moon. Oh, okay. That's an excellent claim. Now, I noticed there's a globe in the bottom left of your camera screen. Can any, everyone see that? Okay, excellent. Hold it up for me. That's even better. Now, you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, when light reflects off a ball, it produces something called a specular highlight, where all the light converges to one point. Now, Ozian, could you show me a picture where the moon has a specular highlight? Uh, was that in your opening argument or mine? Does like, every uh, argument I have have to have, have been in my opening? Was that some type of precursor for this debate? Because no one told me that. Did I present a picture in my opening where I'd have one readily available to show you? I just made a point. If you don't have a rebuttal, just say, I don't have a rebuttal to that. Well, well, you, asked me for a, you asked me for a photo. I don't have a photo. I, I, okay. Well, if you don't have a photo, could you show me one that, you, that maybe you could get somewhere where the moon has a specular highlight because like I said earlier, and you just demonstrated all balls reflecting light have a specular highlight. And they even add one to the earth. Robert Simmons admitted it in his interview because he started with a blank circle and needed to make the scans of the earth look like a ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find something. I'm not finding anything, so. Yeah, because the moon doesn't have a specular highlight. Anyone who's ever walked outside and looked at a full moon knows the whole moon is one uh, shade of the moon. It's not brighter on the center and darker towards the sides. It doesn't have a specular highlight. Wonderful. It's the albedo effect from the regolith on the moon. Great. And you said it was reflecting sunlight. Sunlight is hot. Moonlight is measurably cold. Even Globers, like Ken Wheeler, who thinks we have satellites in space, has tested moonlight with a FLIR. I've done it with a laser thermometer. I know you might not be ready for this argument too. Well, I'm ready for that one. Okay, well, how do you measure moonlight cold? Anyone can do it. It's four to eight degrees colder than the shade at night when sunlight is eight to 20 degrees hotter than the shade during mm -hmm. the day. And just a question, uh, Nathan, uh, just for our live chat, uh, if I, I appreciate all the things you're saying there, uh, if you could just tie that it back into uh, how this relates to the uh, the moon landing there, just so that our live chat uh, understands so uh, why that argument might be pertinent. Yeah, they're there. lying about the nature of the moon, ladies and gentlemen, what it is. So the, the, the moon is not a rock in space that formed off the Earth billions of years ago into a perfect circle and now orbits so we can only see one side of it at all times. That's ridiculous. So what I'm trying to point out is there's inconsistencies with the mainstream narrative about what the moon is. When you test moonlight, it's cold. When you test sunlight, it's hot, almost as if there is a yin and yang in the sky, which is where the yin and yang symbol came from. 
Go ahead, Ozan. Yeah, I don't think the moon's a perfect sphere, but that's regardless of the fact he asked me a question about why the moonlight is warmer or cooler than it is in the shade. It's because the shade is off offering insulation and trapping the heat in. So you're going to get a warmer temperature in the shade than you will when the ground is exposed to the atmosphere. The, you're actually not getting any heat or cold from the moon at all. Okay, but yeah, sometimes the shadow isn't directly under the object casting the shadow. Like, for example, you could have the moon off in the distance over here. Then you have a house right here. You measure the shade here. There's nothing above it insulating this part of the ground at all whatsoever to make it cold. You're next to a house that's warm, that's radiating heat. Okay, but you could do it with a tree. I've done it with trees in nature. It still produces right. the same result. The tree... That's actually what Ken Wheeler used was a tree when he did it with his fleur, the uh, infrared. Trees absorb heat during the day and they're going to release that heat at night. So you're going to see the release. The ground. the ground does too. Yes. That's <laughs> why, that's why the, the, the heat, the ground is releasing in shade, the heat's being re, um, trapped by the shade. So that's why it's warmer in the shade than it is when you're outside of the shade at Perfect. night. All right, uh, I've been asking a couple questions. So I want to give you a chance to ask me any questions that you have uh, so that I'm not hogging the mic. All right, thank you. Um, all right. Um, so you said that the photos were fake, but we know the photos were about the film exposure, right? Like you had to get enough film exposure to be able to see the people on the moon so you couldn't see the stars at the same time. No, the shadows were coming in different direction. I think it was a movie set. I don't think they took any pictures from the moon. Yeah, so I didn't see, like, it looks like you see, it look, appears like some of the shadows are uh, moving in different directions. But if you watch the Mythbusters show, of course, you can see it's because of the shape of the objects that are the shadows are reflecting from that makes it looks like it's in a different angle, but it's actually how that the shadow is being cast. It's not actually coming from a different light source than the sun. But okay. that's a question for me. I mean, I, I'm asking questions, right? So um, you also brought up, so you brought up the woman that she was talking about. Are you talking about the bubbles? Are you talking about the bubbles? I mean, clearly she was mocking you because she's probably heard that that's a typical Moonlander denier debate. You don't, you'd, ra you'd rather assume she's lying than just assume she's mocking you. Uh, well, you know, I guess she had to be there and like look into her eyes. It wasn't like she was joking or mocking me. Like there was a lot of contention there, like like almost like hatred for everything I was saying. So, but yeah, you weren't there. Um, so, you know, it's hard for you to tell me what her demeanor was. Well, I, I agree, but I, but she probably could have been insulted because you're denying what she does for a living, right? So she, she believes in what she does and you're telling her she's being a deceiver and a liar. Sometimes that makes people a little upset. Wouldn't it make you upset? Or do exactly. you consider it normal to be upset when people call you a liar? It's not just not? liars. These people are treasonous thieves and they are traitors to America. It's been it, a lot. Yeah, but I didn't say all that. I just say I knew I knew you're faking the ISS. And she yeah. brought up the bubbles. Okay. So how this Proves the moon landing. What has to do with the moon landing? I'm not sure. It, I, mean, I got some more stuff we can move on to. If you, it it yeah. doesn't. I'm, I'm addressing your opening. You were just offering, like, you didn't actually, like, prove that we didn't go to the moon. You're just offering, offering skepticism for why we should doubt going to the moon. But I don't think you've overcome the massive evidence. We, like, I accept testimonial evidence. Do you accept testimonial evidence for, for claims? Testimonial evidence? Anyone can get on a stage and testify anything. Correct. So do you believe that sometimes they're honest and sometimes, yeah, and they lie, sometimes right? they're lying? Yeah. So no, you can't always believe testimonial evidence. Yeah. So you have to, right. So you have the testimonial evidence. You have video evidence that they brought back with them. You have photos that they brought back with them. You have a telephone communication call that was set up between ham radio operators in Australia, um, talking to the people on the moon and redirecting the call from them to the White House. So you actually had people talking, like you had amateur ham radio operators that could that were talking to them on the moon. When's the last time you flew in a plane, Ozean? 
um, a week ago. All right. When you were in the plane, could you talk on your cell phone? No. No, there's no cell service where the airplanes fly, right? So you're yeah, telling me in right. 2023, we can't get cell service on an airplane, but in 1969, arguably on paper the most corrupt president in human history on paper they're all corrupt probably worse but he was the one who got caught on paper he's the most corrupt president in human history had a phone call with the dudes on the moon 230,000 miles away who somehow went through the van allen belts you're telling that's what you're telling everyone and you want them to believe you look at that smug smirk on your face ladies and gentlemen there you go i, I think it's funny the dude's caught you're caught, dude. No. Yeah, it's funny. It is funny that they told everyone they could call the president from the moon and people like you 60 years later would laugh there with a smug purple suit on laughing, saying you think it's funny. Now you look fresh, but your face is a joke right now, bro. You, your arguments are a joke. The reason why I find it funny is because we did have international telephones at the time and we did have ham radios at the time and we were moon, able to. Moon is not a nation. So I mean, it doesn't matter if we have international telephone communication. The moon's not a nation. We it's talk about interrupting, moon. but whatever. Yes. So it wasn't a telephone call from the moon to the earth. It was ham radio signal. It was a radio signal, radio frequency, electromagnetic frequency that can travel through a vacuum like light. And it can go from the moon to the earth. Then they can take that signal and they can convert it into a signal that they can transmit over lines. And then they can get that. They can route that signal all the way to the White House for the President Nixon to pick up the phone, no matter how corrupt he may or may not have been. I'm not a Nixon hater. No matter how corrupt he may or may not have been, who talked to them on the moon. And he had the other radio communications when they when they talked about how they were um, piloting the lunar mat a lander um, down to the lunar module, excuse me, down to the, the moon or when they were um, getting out of it and they had the camera, you can talk about that a camera folded out that took pictures of them when um, Neil Armstrong was coming down the ladder to take his first step on the moon. He had the, the, uh, the audio, um, of him speaking when he landed on the moon, we have all this evidence that we did this thing. It's historical evidence and you're just poo pooing it all away. I mean, you're not poo-pooing away because you're not convinced of the moon landing. You're poo-pooing away because you're not convinced that the Earth is a globe. No, no, I don't think we didn't land on the moon because the Earth is flat and the sky is a container. Okay, I know we didn't land on the moon because they faked it 50 years ago. There's all kinds of uh, discrepancies and problems with the footage that you're not even willing to admit. You just say it's all, oh, it's all been debunked. The fact we have so many discrepancies, the fact there are so many bloopers, Space travel, all of space travel is fake. Now, you, you said earlier that the spacesuits are rock solid. Yeah, it's red, red rhetoric. So they're, they're actually designed to prevent like micromedia rights from pr- protecting the um, astronauts while they're on the moon. You they're also they're designed- solid, Ozean, right? That, 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 that was a rhetorical statement. They're not rock solid, but they are designed to prevent micromedia rights from, from penetrating the suit. They're designed to protect them from the heat and cold they would experience while they were walking out on the moon. So it's insulated. They had a cooling system that was only in the suits for the people that actually stepped on the moon. The guy in the command module didn't have the same type of cooling system the people on the, uh, the moon did, but they, they faked that too. They made two different types of suits. Yes. Yeah, that'd be hard to do with $60 million a day to make two different kinds of suits. Yeah, you're right, Ozzy, and that's a great argument. All right, so the moon rocks, they came back as a petrified wood after testing them. What do you have to say about that? Um, I know there's been some moon rocks that have been proven to be fake that were petrified wood. Um, I'm not sure if all the claims like the moon rocks specifically from the moon and that have been recorded and documented from the moon, as far as I know, none of those have been falsified as being um, petrified wood. Okay, so they confirmed that moon rocks were fake, but as far as you know, none of the moon rocks are fake. So-called clean moon rocks that people found on Earth, not moon rocks that were not um, stuff that was actually brought back from the actual moon. That's what they told. They gave a, a politician in like Norway an actual rock that they said they brought back from the moon, and that was what was tested as petrified wood. 
It's not like someone's walking around the Grand Canyon. It's like, oh, I found a moon rock. And then they <laughs> test it. And they're like, oh, never mind. It's petrified wood. It was a gift from NASA. They said it was a moon rock. Yeah. So you'd have to confirm that the chain of custody was accurate. You have to confirm that the moon rock was the one that was actually tested. So I'd have to see the chain of custody all the way through from leaving the moon to that person testing the rock. They know it was petrified wood. Any questions for me? I'm, uh, I got a couple more, but that's about it. Um, okay. You did bring up the point about the guy passing out um, in the vacuum chamber. I don't know if we talked about that at all. That's pretty interesting. Oh, we did talk about that at all. That was a when little, they were testing the suit. Yeah. yeah. So he actually experienced like bumbly, bubbling and tingling on his um, tongue. I don't know if you talked about that. But okay. and and they had a antechamber attached to that vacuum chamber. And you are right, the the vacuum that they pull on the chambers is not as um as strong as it and I, I hate to say strong, isn't as low as it would be in the vacuum of space. And we're used to seeing strong, like because it takes more force to pull the air out, but that's not what's going on in space. So but um, they were in an antechamber, so they re they opened that. And the guy had an oxygen mask on and was able to help them, and they repressurized the chamber fairly quickly. He had a little bit of discomfort because of the rapid change of pressure when they repressurized the chamber, but overall, he just he woke back up and he was fine. So even like being exposed to the vacuum in space for or not vacuum in space, the vacuum in that vacuum chamber, he didn't die. He just passed out because of oxygen and disorientation. So. Yeah, but if they didn't reintroduce air, he would have most certainly died. Oh, yeah, he would have suffocated. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Nature abhors a vacuum. That's what Tesla said. <laughs> but you, did, you, you didn't really address, like, these. The, the suits are actually designed to maintain a pressure of 3.7 PSI. It's actually one-fourth um, at, of atmospheric pressure. So they are designed to maintain the air in it. They're not designed um to like withstand like hundreds of pounds of psi so the the difference in pressure between inside the suit and the vacuum on the moon is only 3.7 pounds per square inch it's like going down to a depth of um three meters under the ocean like the difference from the surface level three meters under is like uh, a quarter atmosphere so you you think that it's it's um you think it'd be hard for him to design a suit that could withstand that pressure? Maybe you have some errors on the process of testing it. I think your numbers are way off. No, that's accurate. 3.7 PSI was what the suits were designed for. Yeah, but th that's not the alleged pressure you would need to survive the vacuum of space. Yes, it is. 3.7 PSI. And that's, they actually don't need any pressure, but for them to maintain enough atmosphere, the pressure in the suit so they could breathe. They need at least 3.7 PSI. So when they first tested the suits, I think in a, the first Apollo missions before they actually started going into the moon, they actually used like 100% oxygen mis mixture. I got like conflicting results on this, so it's hard for me to research it specifically. But for the Apollo 11 missions, they had a 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen mixture in the air suits. So they had to have a higher oxygen mixture, mixture at that 3.7 PSI so they could breathe because when we're on the surface of the earth, the atmosphere is 4.6 PSI, right? So, so it's like, if you went, it's actually like 3.7 PSI, I think is equivalent to like 33,500 miles above the earth's surface. So it's something like 5,000 uh, or 37 feet, 33,500 feet above the earth's surface. It's something like 5,000 feet above the top of Mount Everest. And we even use, oxygen tanks and stuff like that. Some people do when they ascend all the way to the top. Some people go without it. They can survive on the top of Mount Everest without oxygen. So it's not like a feat of engineering to make a suit that could withstand 3.7 PSI. That's all it needed. All right, let's, let's assume the vacuum of space is real and that we can get to it in a rocket, right? Okay, so a car on the road uses the road to turn, accelerate, and decelerate. A boat on the ocean would use the water to turn to accelerate and to decelerate. Mm -hmm. An airplane would use the air to turn, accelerate, and decelerate. No. Now, on the way to the moon, they allegedly got there in about three days, and it's 235,000 miles away. So that equals out to about 3,200 miles an hour these guys are traveling. Now, uh, 
how do you slow down and land safely on the moon in the vacuum of space traveling 3,200 miles an hour? I think for part of it, they were traveling faster. I'll have all the speeds written down or I would tell you the exact. That's an average. Sure. So they, they had thrusters. So the, uh, and you're wrong about airplanes. Airplanes don't push off the air. air. It depends on the type of airplane you're talking about. If you're talking about like a prop plane, it's a little bit different how it creates like a, a pressure differential between the front of the props and the back of the props that pulls them forward using the air oh, pressure oh, differential sure. of the wings. But, air control. Sure. but it's not using the air. But anyways, it's air pressure differential. I believe I'm not an aeronautics engineer, but... Okay, so could an airplane fly in a vacuum? Can I finish? Could an airplane fly in a vacuum? If it's not using the air, could an airplane fly in a vacuum? Uh, Not a prop plane, but a jet plane could. Because a A jet jet plane... A jet plane could fly in a vacuum. All right, go ahead. Yes, if it was designed to to withstand the... the, If it had enough thrust to get up to... I think it's like, uh, what what plane has gone to low Earth orbit? They've gone above... um, to not low earth orbit. They got like to the edge, I think, or pretty close to what we would call um, low earth space or whatever it's called. What do you think but moves the, through? The jet doesn't push against air. The jet has thrust that's pushing back, that's pushing the plane forward. It's not pushing against air. Okay, it's pushing back against what? Against air. They're pushing against each other. The thrust is pushing the plane. They're pushing, like, okay, we, we can. I throw this ball when I throw when not ball, but when I throw this and release it, right? So it's put they're pushing against each other. Like when I hit something, we bounce off each other. You got thrust, you got forward thrust from the jet engines. It's not pushing off the air. If it was pushing off the air, the thrust would be pushing off the air. The, it wouldn't, so it'd be moving with the plane. It's not doing that. It's the threats going this way, the gases. From the thrust going this way, you see the flare at first, but the gases stay, it just cools down. So you don't see the air anymore. But that that air from the thrust isn't moving with the plane. So if it's you like, stand behind a jet engine when the jets are on, is it windy? I've been blown down by jet engines. Okay, so, so yeah. it's doing something with the air. And you're saying that that jet airplane could fly in space. No, they don't, okay, so it is a little bit different for jet airplanes. They are using air in the afterburner to compress the air. They're all using air, bud. Blow it out. Not the friggin', not this, the, the, not the friggin', um, the Vulcan, not the rocket. Hey man, you're cool. You're not like this last guy yesterday. Oh my goodness, whatever. I know, I'm way better. Thank you. Yeah, I'd much rather talk to you than uh, that guy. Anyways, or Iron Horse, or I'd rather talk to Winston. I'm gonna pretend you're talking about me. (laughs) I am. (laughs) I was gonna but, say uh, I'll take that for myself. No, uh, we we got uh, we got about ten more minutes uh, of the open discussion. Uh, if you guys want to keep going, if you got any more past, I want to finish this. Yeah, okay. You guys just let me know when you're ready to wrap up, and we'll go into Q and A because uh, I'm good to keep going. So, okay. Yeah. So they're 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 bringing the 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 air with them. They're bringing the components to to blow out the back by creating a combustion to blow the gases and those gases are what's throwing the rocket or blowing the rocket up given its thrust sorry no offense i was in but that explanation blows but we see it happen all the time you, you ever had like fourth of july and rockets and stuff they're not sucking air through the rockets right you've played with like little rockets on fourth of july yeah rockets are a lot different than jet airplanes but well i know it's a diff- different uh it's done differently but the, the overall concept sort of the same but it's creating the the chemical reaction within the um, the rocket, like your little rocket, is creating the thrust. So it's not like air is sucking through it like with the jet airplane. I should have been more precise about the jet airplane. Yeah, but if there's nothing around the rocket to thrust against, then the rocket wouldn't move. Um, it'd move in a vacuum. Like you can set a rocket off in the vacuum. The, the gas is being created by the rocket will go up. Oh, here you go. I know some, some one flat earther, like not you. The other guy was originally supposed to debate tonight. He was going to use a soda can thing, like in a vacuum, like they pull a vac. It's when the cans deformed. It's a stupid argument. But anyways, so when the soda can loses the, um, you pull a vacuum on the cans deformed, it'll blow its top, right? But there's no air. It's a vacuum. But there's movement without a, without an atmosphere in a vacuum. 
Yeah, I'm, Ozzy, I'm going to blow my top if we stay on this topic anymore. Okay, we can move on to the next All one. Right. So does scientific uh, evidence require to go through the scientific method? Um, it depends. Um, so it depends on what you're saying the scientific method is. So the scientific method is de is different depending on the the type of science it is that they're doing. Um, so it de yes. So, so and so they could that, that would be the scientific methods. Yes, there's scientific there's methods. There's multiple. Okay, I, I'm talking about the scientific method. The I'm one saying there's science. Anything outside of that is classified as pseudoscience. It, that's your opinion. That's not what scientists say. So in, in science, there are multiple scientific methods, multiple ways we approach different hypotheses, because sometimes we can't manipulate okay. the, um, the, the variable to be able to calculate the result. Like, or we use time, which we can't manipulate time. Okay, what to, about to natural science? Result. Can you do natural science without doing, following the scientific method? Um, they always follow the scientific method once a claim. You're you're trying to narrowly define what the scientific method is to one definition. I know what you're trying to do, but whatever. Um, y yes, and, and so you can treat time as a um, whatever one of the variables, and then you can see the change of time. You can see what the results are depending on the change of time. Time is not a variable you could manipulate. I never said it was. Okay, so uh, you can just wait and time changes just wait yeah all right yeah so what about gravitational orbits do you have you ever seen a gravitational orbit demonstrated here on earth yes. the mass of one object causes the other object not to fall towards it but to float around it in a circle um no <laughs> but you did you 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 phrased it that way so i want to say the cavendish experiment but okay that's fine if you want to talk don't want to talk about the cavendish experiment way. Because Do you want to say Kevin? orbit orbit around it in a circle, but it, that's what the Cavendish experiment is showing. If the object did have enough speed, it it would orbit around the other object. Yes. Did you just say the Cavendish is proof of gravitational orbits? I <laughs> no. I hope not. I didn't say it proved gravitational orbits. So why are we talking about it? Well, it's the con <laughs> the concept of that demonstrates that gravity exists and that explains why things can fall and maintain an orbit above a certain altitude as long as it's going fast enough yes are you one of those guys that pays women to like whip you no like, i'm not a no i'm not a what sadist i, I just feel like you're enjoying this punishment a little too much punishment <laughs> I enjoy I conversation, Nathan. I, I don't feel like conversation is punishment. We have disagreements. We don't agree on the topic at hand. That's you're not very, punishment to me. But if you have conversationalist, Ozzy, and I think we should wrap it up, maybe do some closing arguments, like uh, give it two minutes each or something like that, and then we'll go to Q&A. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Is that cool? Sure. Uh, yeah, Sounds think, good, Nathan. Yeah, this has been it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll kick it over. Uh, we'll, did you want to close out there, Nathan? We can kick it over to Ozzy and let you Yeah, I mean, it. I started first. I don't mind closing it out first. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really hard for me to prove that they didn't do something 60 years ago other than looking at the preponderance of evidence. And the preponderance of evidence is that, one, they don't even have a vacuum strong enough to test all their equipment that they went to the moon in. They lose all the telemetry data. They destroy all the technology. We haven't been back in 50 years. If you look into uh, the physics of air, NASA admits this on their website with the phases of matter, that needs a container. Even at Earth's surface, where gravity is the strongest, it needs a container. So gravity can't be containing it where gravity is the weakest. The Kármán line or anywhere closer to space, that would all be exponentially lower because gravity works on the inverse square law. Speaking of the inverse square law, the moon should have been much brighter when they landed on it than it appears here on Earth, but it's actually much dimmer when they landed on it. It's, it's not even bright at all. So it's bright enough to light up all the the desert sand, when you walk around in a full moon, you got those problems. And when they tested the spacesuits, the dudes passed out. So now they do it in pools. Well, the bloopers have bubbles in them. I mean, you, you got to put two and two together here. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice will attack it. Ignorance will try and deride it. But in the end, there it is. 
Psalm 2 says, why do the nations rage and plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth have taken arms against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and cast them asunder. So the kings of the earth are all plotting against the creator. So it would just make sense that they would try and discredit his creation. And uh, the, the sky is a map and a clock. We've been lining up megalithic structures to it for thousands of years. So we're not on a ball spinning around the sun, spinning on its axis, traveling through a vast vacuum in the Milky Way. That's all booga booga nonsense given to you by Delphic oracles who are paid to lie. Thanks for your time, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Thanks for having me, Modern Day Debate and things Ozean. I look forward to the Q&A. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, for that closing there, Nathan, and for being here. Uh, and we're going to kick it over to Ozean for up to two minutes closing there. Okay. So it's demonstrably true. We've been to the Earth in the last, oh, I think it's month. The Japanese crashed a lunar lander on the moon in April. So we have been to the moon recently. So why would the government admit that they crash land on the moon? Anyways, I believe that the historical accounts, the testimonial accounts would hold in um, any type of standard in any court, including preponderance of evidence, including beyond a reasonable doubt. I think you have no excuse to deny the moon landing. You have to be some sort of weird skeptic, or you have to deny it just because you believe some other claim is true and it's a contradictory belief. And you don't, you can't somehow tie those together without some type of contradiction. And I think I've demonstrated that today. And I appreciated the conversation with Nathan. And thank you very much for Ryan for hosting it, James for letting me come on here and modern day debate. And this was a much more pleasant debate than the last one. I'm looking forward to the Q and A. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ozian and uh, Nathan Ozian. Ozian, I say it all kinds of ways because he's told me I don't think he cares. So you know, uh, don't worry too much about that. But uh, as usual, I am kind of curious, wondering what's going on in the live chat there. You know, we got five hundred and eighty-four people still watching right now, and, and I'm just going to ask once again: Is do we have arthritic wrists going on? Because the like button is just right down there right down there you just have to click right. it please i'm I, all right i'm not gonna ask you guys anymore all right because uh i've given you enough chances all right so we're going to kick it into our q a now thanks everybody for being here uh our first question is coming in hot and it is for 22 dollars from congo 44 thanks for coming back i have personally bounced a laser off of the retro reflectors left on the moon so that completely debunks nathan's uh Rubbish, they said. Uh, I'm going to keep it spicy. I'm sorry. Of course, he has nothing but to call people who actually do things liars. So No, I don't, I don't think you're lying at all. So, no, I mean, the problem with that is that I think the moon is locked in the firmament and the sky is much closer and probably easier to bounce things off than you. And you're claiming that they put little reflectors on the moon, a perfect angle, so that 50 years later you could bounce a laser off it. Dude, you want to believe that, and you want to believe that that's proof. They were doing, they were bouncing stuff off the moon before they went to the moon to put the retro reflectors on there. So, you want, you want, you're buying it, bro. It's all good. You know, I, I'm not buying it. All right, uh, let's continue on. Earth is life for two dollars. Retro reflectors debate over. I just. Yeah, just to respond to that, I think like if you're saying we measure like we bounced up off the moon, that means we measured the distance to the moon, which is what like two hundred thirty thousand miles away. So you agree with that? No, not at all. I mean, you could bounce something off the moon, and it could be much closer. Um, but they measure the time. We know the speed of light, so we can calculate the time delay, and um, how how far away the moon is based on that. Um, there's assumptions on the speed of light. Also, there's assumptions on the medium you're traveling through. So you're assuming the speed of light and you're assuming the medium that you're traveling through. No, we measure ground. Assumptions, not measurements. We measured the round dis the round trip um, speed of light. Sure. Yeah, you want to believe that? Look into it, ladies and gentlemen. There's assumptions. All right. Well, we can continue on, as I'm sure a lot of these uh, Q and A. Uh, questions are going to launch us into more discussion so for five dollars oh flamio nathan 
You can't have gas pressure without a container, but gravity is a force. The mainstream science says gravity isn't even a force. So that dude's a hundred years out of date. Pseudo force, or it acts like a force. We treat it like a force. It acts like a force, but it's not force. Uh, gravity is described by the general theory of relativity. No, it's an effect of the bending of spa space time. The, the general of relativity describes gravity, yes. That's an effect, not a force. The the force is the consequence of, of our understanding of gravity. Yes. Yeah. How do you bend nothing? Um, it's not. It's not like we're physically bending stuff. It's the. I'm not. I'm not even going to pretend to argue this point because I'm not a freaking physicist or a cosmologist. But the, but re, regardless of the fact, is it's a it's a sh the shape of the Earth is, or the universe is not Cartesian. It's not X Y Z. It's it's bending into gravity wells. As far as our understanding is, maybe our understanding will change in the future. I'm sure it will. Alrighty. Uh, we've got uh, another super chat in here. Uh, Maticus Minot, or Minute, sorry uh, if I'm messing that up. And you can keep your super chats coming in, everybody. So for $10 from Maticus, I love how people think NASA created Velcros. Did you ever walk in the woods and get a uh, picker stickling in your clothes? It takes NASA to make pickers plastic. Get it? I get it. So <laughs> concepts can exist eternally. Like, but to design the things to make it actually marketable and work is what Velcro is. So whatever. But I get it. Yes. All right. We can continue on. Marion, uh, that was a question to modern day debate. So we'll we'll save that till the end, uh, just because it's not a super chat. If we get into the end and uh, we got a little more time, ten dollars from a Yadayan. Nathan, you can do the cold moonlight in quotations experiment during a new moon with no moonlight at all and get the same results. How do you explain it? Uh, that's a begging the question, Fauci. You're gonna have to prove that you can measure moonlight without the moon present holy crap ladies and gentlemen you that's see? what this guy said that the moon isn't there but you can measure the moonlight and get the same result he's saying you can measure the temp temperature differential inside and outside of shade similar to if there is moonlight well there would be no shade if the moon wasn't present to produce to, to produce the shade what are you talking about that's like saying you can measure the shade of the sun at nighttime what I'm using describing as shade is the structures that are providing insulation from the to maintain the heat that's being released by the earth. So that's what I'm just using shade. So I misuse words. I apologize. Next. All right. Let's continue on. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Five dollars from Megalyn. Nathan, as a professional scuba diver, I can tell you bubbles don't behave like that at all underwater. Thanks, dude. Yeah, you're right. Bubbles would never move around underwater, especially with people swimming around them. Dude, have you guys ever played that game where you have the little bubbles and the little things inside? You, you press the thing in the air, moves the game you play, you try and land on. You guys ever played that? Are you kidding me? Are you guys serious? That's your argument? The bubbles would not move underwater in a pool with people swimming around. Seriously? In 2023, this is what I got to deal with, dude. This is ridiculous. Any any thoughts over there, Ozion? Uh, no, I, I agree with the super chatter. Okay. All right. We'll just continue on there. I'm just copying another one that came in. And you can keep your super chats coming in. Just make sure that they're polite or else I'm not going to read them. All right. <sighs> so... Uh, Megalyn, $5. Nathan, many airlines have cell service. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Did you have any comments on that? I mean, even Ozian admits he couldn't use his cell phone. Every time I fly, I can't use my cell phone. Maybe sometimes they can get cell phone service to the airplanes. But if they don't have all freaking cell phone service working for planes and they could get a phone call to the moon uh, with a ham radio 50 years ago. You guys don't think anything's fishy about that. I mean, that's statism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. 
like communication navigation sort of guy. I did that for a living for a long time in the US Navy, but I understand sort of how that stuff works. But yeah, I think there is like Wi Fi you can get in the airplanes. You have some type of radio signal they receive while they're flying um, or satellite or whatever. I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but sometimes you can't get a service on the airplane and you can use that service to make phone calls. Sometimes you can't get service 100 miles out of town, dude. I would but, give me a break, you guys. I was in Houston, Texas, yeah. uh, where Texas A&M, 20 minutes from Texas A&M, and I couldn't get cell service there. But they can convert 20, a Wi-Fi. 20. They can convert a Wi-Fi signal to a cell signal and transmit it within the aircraft if that's what they're doing. I know you yeah. could do that. I'm not sure if that's how they're doing it or not. I don't know. Yeah, they could do it, but they destroyed the technology. It's a the process to get it back. Right, uh, cool. This is modern tech 2023. And they didn't destroy the technology. And other, other nations are going to the moon now. So we have the technology. The U.S. They just didn't isn't destroy doing it. it. Don Pettit, yeah. the astronaut, is wrong. The purple shirt on, shirt on YouTube is right, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to the guy in the purple suit. Don't listen to the astronaut, Don Pettit, because the astronaut that works for NASA doesn't have a clue what he's talking well, about. Let's just throw him under the bus real quick. Right, Ozian? Yes, because technology is different from the equipment. So they have the knowledge which is what technology is to me. So I'm using the words differently from him. So he's saying they destroyed all their tools and equipment and stuff to build the stuff they would need to go to space, which is different from having the technology, which is I'm seeing is the knowledge to build the things to go to space and go to the moon. We know we can do it because we're doing it now. We've Like five nations have been to the moon. Only three have successfully landed. I guess it's pretty hard to land on the moon without a human being there. I mean, that's pretty interesting, though, isn't it? Like, if you're going to think of something miraculous, it takes a human to pilot the the, the LEM down to the surface without crashing every or half the time. It's pretty interesting. I wish your arguments were as fresh as your Bernie suit, Ozium. Bernie? I'm not a Bernie supporter, by the way. I'm a libertarian and not that type of libertarian. I said Barney, like the purple dinosaur. Oh, Barney. Yes, he's I invisible, though. You love me. We all know NASA's bakery. Back in the day, I used to use that as an atheist <laughs> argument, by the way. The I, visible purple dinosaur. <laughs> I like I liked the rhyming. But I did think he said, uh, I thought he said Bernie as well. So I, I think our brains went to the same place. But Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I could hey. just, I, I can't. I can't with the headphones on. I can't hear my voice back. So no impressions tonight. All right. Uh, let's keep on moving, everybody. Um, Tim prior oh i've scrolled down a little bit sorry i might have missed skipped a few there um all right flanker 420 ten dollars what about historical proof the cold war was fake too the moon race was also to show off who could make a bigger rocket for a show of force also how can i take detailed photos of the is the iis thanks Uh, how, why can you take detailed photos? Because it's orbiting the Earth. I think it's for Nathan. Nathan, go ahead. So yeah, the, but I asked. Yeah, if you wanted me to repeat a little bit quicker there, they asked, what about historical proof? Like the Cold War happened and the U.S. was motivated to go to the moon to show the rush to the, uh, the commies that we were superior to them, I think is what he's saying. Okay, so so one thing that the Globies got to understand is a lot of the nations that might be fake fighting in the news are all working together to fake space. It's one of the ways they steal money from their citizens. So hopefully that answers that. I've never seen a detailed photo of the ISS, which is in a pool. So, okay. You know you can see it. Like, Okay, have you, ever, have you ever looked at the ISS? From uh, I, with telescopes, yes. Okay, how long can you see it for from horizon to horizon? Uh, I'm not sure how fast it's going super super fast. Like I know uh, I didn't ask I how fast it's going because it is going super super fast. I'm not. I don't know. Can you five tell me? miles a second? Yeah, you can see it for approximately six to eight minutes okay. in the night sky from horizon to horizon. Now, in six to eight minutes, going five point three miles a second, seventeen thousand miles an hour. Do you have any idea how fast the ISS would travel during that time? Um, I 
don't I haven't done the math right now. So you, if you know, thousands of miles, Ozian, like basically, I know from Los Angeles to New York. So you're telling me you can see the space station the size of a soccer field at yeah. night in the night sky glowing for from LA to New York in the sky. Yeah, for a, a few moments. Yeah, like for, if you get a telescope. Minutes. Not yeah. for a few moments. For eight minutes. Oh, no. You can only see it if you can get a line of that's sight like, to it. That's like a dump in the morning where you could fit in two chess games. You can see it for eight minutes, bro. Eight minutes. And it's going okay. 17,000 miles an hour. It doesn't change angular size from horizon to horizon. It doesn't get dimmer or brighter. Obeying the inverse square law because something going from LA to New York would obviously get brighter as it gets closer to you and dimmer as it goes away. It's like a drone, bro. There's something up there. Yeah, I agree with that, but it's not the ISS free falling at 17,000 miles an hour with flakes accelerating, decelerating, and turning off it in the vacuum of Narnia. That's not real, dude. Yeah, it, actually, I just looked it up. Um, the angular size of the ISS does vary as it travels. I just Googled, sky. Google told me. I mean, why uh -huh. do you even need a brain anymore? I mean, you just, just have to Google it. Well, I have to fact check you because that claim didn't sound right. So have you measured that to prove the angular size doesn't change as it tra transverses the entire sky? You're claiming you can see it from LA to New York, dude. That's You're so ridiculous. You I made can't a claim. Entertaining this. You made a claim that the angular size does not change as it transverses the entire sky. Did you measure that? Go look at it. Okay? I did. I don't it's, have the measurements off, off on hand here. It says the angular off. size does change, which is just wow. basic trigonometry. I Googled it. You didn't look at yeah. any ISS flyby. You Googled the answer. You know, like Google's going to uh, have all these answers ready for you, Globeheads. It's thank you. really cold. No, it's, it's because... Moonlight is cold. They're, all the nations are lying to you about everything. Google was created by the CIA. And you're like, you don't think Google's going to have an answer ready for you, numpy no. donuts that can't think for yourselves? Give me it, has nothing, it has nothing to do with the Google results. It's because I have an understanding of shapes and trigonometry and stuff like that. So the claim you made on its face sounded false but i didn't want to just come out and say it was false without verifying that my my understanding of basic geometry was correct and that the angular size does change okay it does change because you looked on google but i looked at the no. ISS fly by and it didn't change so go look it up like, all across the entire when watch, horizon when you watch the iss go from la to new york in eight minutes which is flipping impossible and ludicrous to believe Go tell, let me know, measure it. And then let me know if it changes size. If it does, I'll send you a cash app. Really appreciate it. I was wrong. Wouldn't um, be the first time. Won't be the last. I think you would be great. I don't like to gamble. All right. Next question. Well, uh, yeah, let's continue on then. Um, do, do, do. Um, Oh, we're going to skip that one. Thanks for $5 there, uh, Megalyn, but uh, I won't be reading that one. Tim Pryor. Um, Austin. Austin. Until Wrong person. You, I was going to say, I think you, yeah, you may have mistaken uh, our speaker here. Until you can name one field of science that agrees with you, don't even say a word. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know if that's for you or if he's trying to be mocking or i'm not sure if you just made a mistake but you're welcome to skip that if you want that's it's a normal comment that's made towards witsit so but go ahead yeah. guys watching the debate from last night and thinks he's in the live chat <laughs> i don't know but i uh, respect the super chat i just okay oh, fluid statics large bodies of water do not curve the surface is level and horizontal to its container the word level in the dictionary means free of bends curves and irregularities Synonyms are flat, plumb, flush, and straight. Well, you were bringing up the stuff about the scientific method. Excuse me, oh, yeah, that question was for wits, it, not you. Can we move you're, on? Yeah. You're, you are correct. That is funny. That, <laughs> that is funny. But uh, let's let's let Ozian uh, let's let Ozian uh, right, elaborate on his was, thoughts there. I was done. So sorry, I, I, didn't, I thought it was funny. Yeah. No, you were bringing up the thing about the scientific method. So maybe it was related for that and and. They think you look like Witsit. 
Maybe that's a compliment. I don't know. But anyways. Oh, we're all good looking people, I think. <laughs> I like to I like to think so. All right, let's continue on. Um, Tim Pryor, I agree, Nathan. We don't live on a ball, we live on a planet, but you can't get that right, can you? It's a little spicy. So we live on a ball. Yeah. We li- uh, I agree, Nathan. We don't live on a ball. We live on a planet. So I agree. He agrees with me. I'm right. See? Yeah, we don't live on a ball. We live on a planet. We definitely don't live on a ball. Next question. Correct. Straight facts. No cap. Mm-hmm. See? I'm, you're not even wearing a cap. No cap. Hey. We um, all agree. If we have a moment of an agreement, that's uh, that's good win. That's a good win. We're near the end, I think, here. So, uh, you know, we got maybe about 15 minutes left, uh, unless we get into something real, real juicy. Uh, let's continue on. Um, Oflamio, for $2, thank you so much. Uh, to clarify, said, Ryan, I said force field. You didn't read it right. So his initial comment oh. up here was, Nathan, you can't have gas pressure without a container, but... Gravity is a force field. A force field. Yeah, use the force, young Skywalker. All right, cool. I, I'm oh. an ordained Jedi Knight, and he knows that. So, and he's he's a character you should meet. Oplamio. <laughs> come to the Modern Day Debate Discord, and you should have a chat with him. He, I thought you were going to say come to the dark side. <laughs> oh no, I'm a Jedi. So <laughs> the light side. Like I have my book here. Yeah. That's, oh, that's a Sith book. Don't look at that one. That's pretty. Funny. I'm not familiar. Sir. I date girls. On oh. a on a separate note, I am I am making a, a Star Wars. <laughs> I'm making a Star Wars D and D campaign, and it's going to be very exciting. I'm not going to give any spoilers because uh, it's alternate reality stuff. You know, it's getting crazy. All right, let's continue on. Uh, so uh, beyond our force field and our Star Wars references. Earth first, space later. Five dollars. The moon is always lit evenly no matter the phase a sphere would never reflect light that way it's not a rock floating in a sky vacuum i think that one's for you Ozan. yeah so the um a sphere he's saying the sphere would always reflect the same amount of light back is that the claim well i'll read it a little quicker here so maybe it'll sum sum it up a little nicer the moon is always lit evenly no matter the phase a sphere would never reflect light that way it's not a rock floating in a sky vacuum so the the light that's reflected back to you it would change in intensity depending on what part of the moon is physically closer to you it would technically be brighter there but the difference in distance between the light ref- the albedo reflecting the sunlight to you isn't that much difference from the shape of the moon compared to the distance of the earth to the moon which is like 230,000 miles so the light is going to look relatively even due to how far the moon is away from the earth and the light travels in straight lines the light you're seeing is a light that's reflecting directly back well off the sun directly back to the earth yeah, but that requires you to know the distance to the moon. How do you know the distance to the moon? We have this device. We can reflect lasers off of it. I think we've used there, radar to measure. There the you are speaking French again. We now, if we use ref- retro reflectors on the moon to determine the distance to the moon, how do you get to the moon to put the ref- retro reflectors there, Einstein? Well, I proved Come on, it. Bro. We, Come we on, your a- religion says you went there in a in a homeless tweaker shelter. How did you know the distance to get there? To place the retro reflectors. I, on. I think it was during one of the later Apollo missions, like 15 or something, that we put the reflectors on there. It wasn't like the first so one. So we didn't know the there. distance to the moon until Apollo 15 mission. Oh, we had radar. We, we, we measured the distance to the moon prior to that. You measured it with mm-hmm. radar. I believe it was with radar. I'd have to verify that. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, we'll uh, ask another question to Nathan while you check that out, Ozan. Um, so, uh, Megalyn for you, Nathan, f- uh, for $10 says, Nathan, again, bubbles underwater accelerate and grow in size. The particles you see in space are moving at constant velocity and staying the same size. No, they accelerate and decelerate. I mean, if you have a certain mass of air underwater, that mass of air is not going to just grow unless the air is somehow heating up or something. 
So no, bubbles don't just get bigger and bigger and bigger underwater. I, I haven't even heard that. So. <clears throat> I hate using these ancient Greek philosophers to show the distance to the moon. I know we did other tests after that. I'll look it up later. I missed that comment entirely. Sorry, super chatter. Excellent. Uh, I, I'm back now. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, did you uh, did you look that up there, Ozion? You want to check that out, or did you want to continue on? Uh, let's continue on. I'll. Yeah. All right. Let's continue. I've uh, read it before. I just can't remember the every way we've measured the distance of the moon, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know you were checking that out. So uh, I thought that might be uh, a topic of discussion there. So uh, as to Ben, uh, uh, Labaka, and uh, yeah, it looks like our live chat has uh, kicked up again. They're uh, kicking and screaming. They want us to keep uh, having this debate. So uh, keep those live chats coming in and we'll, uh, we'll keep having the uh, discussion. So uh, continuing on, uh, and I'm trying not to butcher names. So Esteban uh, Ilbaka uh, for 5,500 CLP, not sure what that is, but Nathan, no one has measured the ISS staying the same size. It looked like that to you. Once measured, it isn't. Also, the time it takes is precisely what's predicted, expected, and observed. Stop lying, they added at the end. Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd expect to see something the size of a soccer field from L.A. to New York. We'd expect that. Things don't decrease in angular size the farther they get away, Nathan. That's just stupid flurf math. And yeah, they do. And it's chili and pesos. He's saying it is does change in angular size. Mm. What he said. You, you're saying it doesn't. I got you. I answered the question. All right. So uh, five dollars uh, from Tim Pryor, Nathan. We all understand this is a little bit of tacky do you want me to read this go for it yeah tim's a big fan of mine he shows up for all my debates dude i i live rent free in a lot of glover's heads but yet i have no idea who they are which i'd like to keep it that way all right well uh nathan's getting spicy so we'll read your chat there uh tim nathan we all understand you don't get big numbers this is why you mean nothing in the real world that's a little that's a little spicy, but uh, he's saying you don't understand big numbers or big math. So uh, we're going to cap it at that point and try to focus on that. <laughs> That's a little rude. Oh, Zion, what's two to the 20th power? Two to the 20th power. What is it? One million what? It's one million um, mm -hmm. raised to three times 100, I think. Uh, 1,048,576. Now, what's that times two? What two did you million. say? You, I thought you said, oh, you said two to the 10th power? Two to the 20th. Oh, yeah. Two to the 20th power. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I was thinking 10. Whatever. 1,048,576. What about yeah. two to the 21st power? Oh, so, yeah, I can do it. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16,384, 32,768, 64, oh, whatever. But yes, 5,536, yeah, 161,072, 262,000. It's base two. Yeah. I I, I know, get, I'm super based. It's just it's just an insult. Yeah, I heard ten to the twentieth power. I don't know why I heard that. D yeah. That guy can't even probably probably can't even write cursive left-handed mirror image, and he's saying I don't know big numbers. Come on, bro, go study yeah. your go study your. Sometimes, multiple. sometimes I wonder, like the like conceptualization of shapes, because I debate some like flat earthers that it seems like. They don't understand basic geometric states, shapes, and basic geometry. Have you heard some of these people actually call math? They call it math and magic. They can they they treat it like it's fake. You're not that person, are you? Like math is real. Okay. No, math is real. I'm a vegan though. I eat fake meat. And if you eat real animals, oh, there's something wrong with you guys, dude. You gotta get stop your addiction to body parts. But I'll just throw that in there. Yeah. I like my wife's body parts. 
That's good, yeah, but don't eat your wife's body parts. Well, not all whoa, of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. We want everybody <laughs> to stay in the live chat. We don't want to send them off elsewhere, okay? Keep it. We're, we want spicy, but not, like, hot. So let's continue on. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, that's uh, that, That's all our thoughts on that one there. So we're going to continue on. Uh, Earth first, space later for $2. Sel Selen Selenelion? I can't say this word. Selenelion. Selenelion. Thank you so much. Selenelion shadows disprove globe model hands down. Sure. It's refraction through the atmosphere. We know it is. If it's refraction causing lunar eclipses, you can't predict them months or years in advance, dude. That would be based on the weather. Yeah, we can predict refraction. We know how refraction works through the atmosphere. You can predict the weather months and years in advance. You don't re predict the weather. It's not refraction through the low atmosphere of the Earth. It's refraction through the upper atmosphere of the Earth. Okay. Otherwise, the you would see clouds would block the, would block the moon. It, that's what's going on. They get the lunar eclipse from the sorrow cycle. You know that, right? Um, the sidereal cycle. Yeah, I can't pronounce words. Sure. Sorrow's cycle. Sorrow's. To predict eclipses. Yeah, that was developed okay. by Flatter. Yeah, they've known how to predict eclipses for thousands of years. I know. Yes, Flat Earthers have known how to predict eclipses for thousands of years. You're right. Yes. Back when they didn't even think Earth was a globe, they knew how to predict eclipses. Isn't that I interesting? <laughs> It's based on measuring the periods between incidences, and they could calculate it based upon that when they would when they would happen. They had this all complicated mathematical modeling system to calculate where all the celestial bodies would be that were obvious from the Earth. And yes, like we we know the history of how we went from that model conceptualization of the solar system to the one we have today. But yeah, the super chatter was right. Selenelion eclipses debunk the heliocentric model. That's why they call them the impossible eclipse. Look it up, ladies and gentlemen. Google impossible eclipse. They're going to start telling you how it's refraction. Yes. Look it up. So it's not impossible. It's rhetoric. It's like rhetorical flourish. They just colorful language. All right. Uh, we'll continue on. Uh, so we only got a few super chats left. So uh, everybody in the live chat, if you want to keep the keep our speakers speaking, uh, fire some more in the live chat. If not, we're going to be wrapping it up here soon. Uh, Megalyn, five dollars. Nathan, you're just talking nonsense. Gas expands as it rises in the ocean as the pressure decreases. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would make sense. The pressure decreases, the bubbles would get a little bit bigger. But I mean, in a pool, that's 20, 30 feet deep, there's not going to be a drastic difference in the pressure gradient. Yeah, so. no, at, at 30 feet deep, it's double. So at 20 feet deep, it's like, I think it's like nine PSI um, higher at 20 feet deep, something like that. So every Dude, 10 feet, it's like. Sorry, I was in. Or maybe it's every 10 feet is a quarter atmosphere or something like that. But that's actually really interesting because if we could show that those are expanding as they go up in frame, then then what are Globers going to say then? Like what really what are because I haven't even looked for that ever. It could come close. It could be because it's coming closer, so the angular size is getting bigger. So you'd there have to be able to. Well, you'd have to be able to tell if it's coming closer or not too. Uh, oh, and it, already, you got your math magic ready, bro. Just math magic. Go a little bit on there. Yes. Math magic bay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, let's continue on. All right. Esteban uh, Ilabaca, once again, uh, CLP, whatever. I should have looked this up in the meantime. Chilean, peso, Chilean pesos. Yes. He had this last time. Thank you so much. Uh, Nathan, it changes angular size and is precisely the angular size such a shiny object should be. So this is, uh, in, they are expanding on, I think, their earlier chat. So let me just bring that up. ISS. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. You guys already understand where we're going. So, Nathan, it changes angular size and is precisely the angular size, such as a shiny object should be. How large is a sunlit mirror at a distance? Okay. The ISS is not a mirror, guys. That's a, that's a problem. It's glowing in the sky at night on the opposite side of the sun. And Globers don't see any problem with that. It travels the distance from LA to New York and stays lit 
the entire time. It, it's right. not a uh, hundred cool. degrees opposite of the sun, but it's on this, what do they call the solar? Um, oh, what do they call it? The solar plane is different from the earth plane. So the earth is spinning like this. It's, the sun is like this. So the ISS can be over here where you're in the dark, but the sun can shine off the ISS depending on where it is in relationship to the earth and the sun. All right. I will uh, ask one of the questions that was uh, posted to at Modern Day Debate, uh, though, which uh, a couple of people were asking about, which I think adds some uh, extra context to the overall conversation we are having tonight. So Marion Gran Bruheim uh, says at Modern Day Debate, according to Nathan Thompson, why are they allegedly lying about the nature of the moon or the landing, I guess, in that mm -hmm. case? Uh, yeah, I said to hide the creator. But also, if people are paying you 60 to $80 million a day for a space agency and space isn't real, well, then you're going to constantly have to come up with new things to lie about. So that's why they're always discovering planets or there's this asteroid over here. We got a new view of Saturn's moon or blah, 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 blah. There's freaking homeless people in America and they're going to take pictures of rocks. Even if we were a ball in space, Stealing $80 million a day to go take pictures of it is ridiculous. So that's my answer. Andy. All right. I would love to have the homeless problem debate at some time. That would be good to have. Uh, well, we we always... probably would agree more than not, though, Nathan. Oh, we always uh, have uh, the option to line up more debates uh, when we get to the end of this. So that is the end of our questions there and our Super Chats. Uh, did either of you want to take a minute for any other closing statements or are we good to wrap up? No, other than the Christian I debated uh, praise, uh, you were probably one of the one people I enjoyed debating the most, dude. So OC, Thanks, Nathan. That's you. I know that's not the first time I've heard that. Off to me, but my hat is off to you as well. <laughs> I enjoyed right. the conversation, Nathan. I think we can feed off each other. Like, but some people just want to feed off themselves. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, with that uh, moment of amicability, I uh, appreciate everybody in the live chat coming out. Uzayan, uh, Nathan, this has been great. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow uh, for some more juicy topics. Uh, so stay tuned for that and uh, make sure that uh, you share this out to your spaces where you do these debates. Put it on your Facebooks, your Instagram, you know, take clips, you know, do that sort of thing and show your friends uh, so that we can uh, get this these debates out there, because that is the best way for us to, uh, yeah, get our content out there. Yeah, let's get this out. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Good job on moderating, too, bud. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Please like, share, and subscribe to Ozean Talks for more of this content.